Oh, okay, so it's starting. Uh, so uh, Jorge Gracia is going to speak about the current challenges of linguistic link data uh, and also the proposed roadmap to address these challenges and to obtain an ecosystem of interoperable link link linguistic link data. So I give the floor to you, Jorge, uh, and we are very curious to hear the presentation. And after, of course, there will, there will be some time for questions and answers. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you very much for the introduction and also for the invitation. I am very happy to be here and continue with this series of, of talks about uh, around the linguistic link data. Um, as you said, I'm, I'm from the University of Zaragoza. Um, I'm also a chair of the Nexus Linguarum construction uh, that just finished uh, last month after four years and a half. Uh, the, the construction, uh, this construction was centered on the topic of uh, linguistic data science. And, and one, of the, one of the main ingredients in, 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 in that action, in that linguistic uh, data science uh, field is linguistic link data as an enabler of, of, of this um, ideal ecosystem of or interconnected, uh, semantically interoperable data. And yeah, I'm, I'm telling this because the roadmap I'm showing today and the, 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 the challenges identified um, in, in this area comes primarily from, from our activities in, in Nexus Linguarum. I, I will mention some, some other outcomes of the action. But uh, basically, it, it, it comes from, from there as a collaborative effort among, uh, well, many, many researchers. So let's start. Today, I will speak, um, I, I will try to enlist a, a number of challenges and a possible roadmap to, to address them in this field of linguistic link data. And, uh, yeah, as uh, I guess uh, many of you are already aware of the uh, technology, um, just as a quick reminder um, about at least the, mo the motivation of, of this technology, I will start um, remembering that, um, yeah, the, the idea, the, the main motivation behind the linguistic link data comes, uh, well, actually linguistic link data following its name <laughs> is link data. So uh, many things that uh, apply to, or most of things that, that apply to link data, apply apply also to, to linguistic link data. So the motivation of of, uh, of this sub sub uh, area of link data, which we call the linguistic link data, comes uh, from the fact that there um, around all around the, on the web there are uh, electronic um, language resources, dictionaries, terminologies vocabularies, glossaries, corpora, etc., that are uh, disconnected. Um, they come in, in, in data silos. Mm, typically, they follow their own proprietary formats, different representation schemes, uh, different access levels from uh, mm, very sophisticated APIs and well-developed ones to uh, just um, send me an email and I will <laughs> give you uh, the dictionary, uh, and also described with different metadata schemes, etc. So the lack of interoperability uh, across these data sets is uh, basically what, what um, motivated to represent them as linked data and to, to stimulate it and stimulate it what, what uh, we call the linguistic link data field as a um, motivating Example, imagine that um, you want to represent or you have information about the um, a lexical entry, red in Spanish, meaning uh, network. So uh, if you want like a complete view of, of uh, their uh, linguistic properties, you have to to access several several resources like uh, Spanish Royal Academy. Uh, let me put the pointer here. Okay. Spanish Royal Academy, when you have like uh, feminine form, or you can go to a um, dictionary like Apertium to get some translations to um, other resources to get, for instance, uh, edit, uh, an image of it. 
um, other resources where you can have the phonetic form or um, or uh, singular forms, etc. So there's a, a number of scattered uh, informations um, on the web, and ideally, if we were able to represent the, such informations, such sources of information, such data sets, following the standards of the semantic web, for instance, following the the, the lemon model, we could eventually be able to integrate them following uh, well well-defined uh, link data patterns and have like a common uh, graph to describe all the information and a common entry point to access all of them or the part of it, this information that we need so it is just um, a way to illustrate the the, the need uh, or the benefits of, of link data in, in linguistics um, as a summary mm, the summary points of the benefits is uh, that uh, integration of, of these uh, language resources will be uh, possible by following a common model in RDF. Uh, links will be explicit among them. Uh, data is exposed in a, star in a standardized way, uh, mainly using uh, Sparkle web standard for querying. Uh, following uh, similar metadata schemes, of course, uh, uh, data is more easy to discover and uh, more easy to access. And um, we can take also advantage of, of using common vocabularies for representing the, the language content. So um, unifying the information, uh, making single queries to access several data sets, etc. It's uh, tremendously uh, facilitated by, by this. So this is about the, the motivation, the benefits of, of uh, link data, of linguistic link data, so link data in linguistics. Um, I will go very quickly through the landscape of linguistic link data as a subfield of link data and how we, how we have reached the current uh, status, the current uh, situation. So in a timeline, considering like the 2001 the foundational uh, paper of the semantic web as a starting point. Um, yes, just a few years ago, even before the, 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 the notion of link data will be like a wide, widespread, this um, set of ontologies for linguistic annotation, OLIA, was developed or the development that started. An important uh, point was the creation of the Open Linguistics Working Group and the publication of the lemon model for ontologies uh, to represent ontology lexica. Uh, possibly lemon is the most uh, extend extendedly used uh, de facto standard for, for linguistic link data or lexical resources. And this happened in 2010, uh, shortly after the Ontolex community group was founded because lemon was created in the context of, of a European project. And uh, the intention was to, to make it broader to, to a broader community and, and uh, this, this start, uh, started happening in 2011. In 2012, um, a, a classic workshop in the, in the field which is in data linguistics uh, started. And also we had the first implementation of the LLOD cloud. Uh, okay. Then in 13 and 14, two new uh, W3C community groups were created to contribute to this area. The VPN load, this practice for multilingual link open data and link data for language technologies. Uh, so after these uh, years working with Lemon to make it like an open uh, specification by the community, in 2016, the Ontolex Lemon uh, specific specification appeared. And uh, three years after, an extension, also an, an important extension for, of Lemon for, for lexicography, to work with lexicography, was released. And uh, yes, as uh, a so final milestone in this, this timeline, I, I put here the publication by Springer of the first monographic book on linguistic uh, link data in uh, 2020. So, um, Along these years, 
this the so-called uh, LL of the cloud, which is like a, a the counterpart, the linguistic uh, uh, dimension of the bigger link data cloud that you possibly all know. I am um, so was evolving since uh, its inception in 2011, where it was manually crafted. So the, the first diagram you have on the on the left is, is something manual, and then it was automated. Automated. It it was uh, growing around the years, uh, also stimulated by some uh, European projects. For instance, I will mention here the leader project, and uh, continue growing until uh, well some data sets uh, acted as, as a hub, like uh, Wikipedia, BubbleNet, uh, Olia, Lexinfo, and others. And until now, um, a remark I'd like to, to make is that the difference between this uh, period of, of great uh, uh, growth and explosion and now is not significantly different. We will analyze this later. So uh, that's about the growth of the link, link open data cloud, sorry, linguistic link open data cloud, that as you know, is a, is a part of, of this bigger uh, link data cloud. This is a picture of uh, as of yesterday. And where actually the um, Linguistic part is, is are the bubbles in between. You know, every bubble is a is a data set um, published following the link data standards, and uh, its edge is uh, represents links to other data sets. Okay. So, also as a quick reminder, these are the the, the mainly used vocabularies. Um, that the community of linguistic link data uses. I will not enter into any detail here, just to mention them for reference. So I, I mentioned Ontolex uh, Lemon and Lexico for lexicons and dictionaries, but uh, for metadata, well, for the basic metadata of the data sets, uh, we use the usual link data ones like um, uh, DC terms, Dublin core, etc. But there are also some other more specific um, uh, vocabularies for, for linguistic metadata or, or metadata of language resources like MetaShare or LINE, uh, SCOS for accessory, uh, for corporate annotation, NIF, <coughs> web annotation, and when we want to account for, for data categories, uh, LexInfo is uh, extendedly used, uh, also Lexbo for, for language tags, and etc. Et Okay, so um, I like to remark that this is not only uh, an academic uh, exercise, um, but that the, the, the adoption of linked data in, in linguistic and language resources um, is, is, is there. There are um, a relatively increasing adoption of, of linguistic linked data methods and models. I enlisted here a number of them. Wordnet uh, was uh, an early adopter of Lemon, also Global WordNet currently, uh, BubbleNet, uh, Divinary, many others. Uh, also companies like Key Dictionaries adopted uh, the standard for, for their own dictionaries. Um, even if not to, to, to expose them openly, but uh, at least to, to address um, interoperability within their own data and to enable also uh, reach uh, external data more easily. Wikidata, the, the, the lexical part of Wikidata also is, is using um, linguistic link data, a uh, subset of, of Ontolex. The LILA project, uh, linking Latin, Latin I, I like to, to mention it also as, as a, an excellent use case of uh, Ontolex, Lexicog and other linked data models. So if you have uh, some time, I invite you to take a look at, at it. So there are, there are others. So this is not that, that this is just, I, I wanted to show that this is not a, an academic uh, exercise, but there are uh, systems out there already, already using it. So uh, once I 
somehow put the basis <clears throat> of uh, what was the motivation of Linux Link data, um, what, uh, how, how it evolved along the years. Now we are in a point in which, um, despite its, its benefits, despite its uh, obvious uh, advantages, still uh, there are some challenges to address. Because uh, when someone wants to publish link data, it is not just to <laughs> press a button and that's it. It's more complicated than that, that uh, it should be. So in the process of, of uh, publishing and consuming link data, linguistic link data in particular, there's a number of, of uh, issues that uh, we have grouped in, like in four types, <clears throat> challenges and issues. And I will go uh, one by one. Mentioning well, what the issue is about, what the challenge is about, uh, ways to address them, and things that currently uh, we are doing to address them, etc. First of all, uh, let me mention <clears throat> just to put some more context. Um, in the Nexus Link War Room um, action, sorry, we did in one of our meetings last September 2023. In Milan, one of our plenary meetings, we perform a sort of informal uh, survey among uh, a number of participants. Uh, I, I think it was almost 40 to check um, what, what were, what was their perception of the issues of uh, linguistic link data, and if they were, were aligned with our intuitions. So uh, most of the people in the meeting were already acquainted with, with linguistic link data and, and many of them had already used it. And we ask about, uh, we were asking about, uh, yeah. First thing we ask is rank the, the issues of uh, linguistic link data according to importance. And uh, we saw that the, the winner was uh, a hard entry barrier on the technology. Second place was for the need of more powerful support and infrastructures. Uh, <clears throat> also the, the effect of broken links and the little evolution of, of uh, the, the cloud were uh, in the survey, but well, I want to concentrate on this, that the, the, the entry barrier of the technology was like um, something that people identified as, a, uh, as an important issue. So let's start with this, with these uh, barriers. The idea is that, um, in fact, people find the, the learning curve um, challenging sometimes lacking enough technical support, maybe other areas uh, are more developed, more mature, and you can more easily find like uh, tutorials or, or documents or instructions or guidelines to, to, to follow it. And in, an er in our area, uh, there are a number of them, but maybe not so easy to reach or maybe not so widespread. There's also accessing issues to some data sets. Possibly some of you with experience in link data has um, have experienced how frustrating it is to, to go to the link open data cloud, identify a bubble, a data set that you want to use, and then discover that it is a, now it's a broken link or it is a data set that has been discontinued. So in actually in order to address this, there's a um, couple of things we can do for the moment, which is investment in, in education and more user-centered tools. There are a number of tools already, already out there. Uh, let me mention Bogbench, for instance, which is like a framework to, to develop um, um, taxonomies and also lexicons, uh, ontolex uh, lexica. Um, in a in a quite visual manner with with a, with a framework with this open framework, 
but more tools are needed in that direction. So the, in, in our survey, we were also asking um, if about the position of producers and consumers of uh, linguistic data. Please notice that um, many aspects and many challenges that um, we have been mentioning now and that we reported um, are also common of linked data because it comes in the nature of linked data. Some others maybe have uh, linguistic aspects, but some others not. And I think sustainability of um, data sets in linked data is, is one of it. So in our survey, we were also asking about uh, the role of the consumer. And if you were a consumer, you, what you would prefer? <laughs> so most of the people prefer that the, the data provider host all the infrastructure, for instance, a triple store in their servers. And uh, myself as a consumer just uh, have to, to take the relevant data from there and do whatever I need to do. Um, <clears throat> the opposite side, which is uh, to get all the data from the provider and then I will do everything myself, uh, was responded by just a few of them. But a notable, well, a good number of, of respondents um, want something in between. Second, a, a new question was to put the focus on the provider. And uh, people, providers and people in the role of providers think the opposite. <laughs> so as a provider, people uh, prefer to host the data in the most lightweight way, and then the client uh, would access the data in the way and process it in the way they need. And only a, a, a minority uh, would like to set up the whole thing, the whole infrastructure, the whole uh, triple store and offer uh, data services. <clears throat> so uh, it, what does it mean? It, this illustrates well, uh, as I said, this, this questionnaire was just for illustration, just was an exercise uh, among people acquainted with linguistic link data and possibly it's not significant of the of the whole community, but it was illustrative enough to 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 notice that these results were were well aligned with our own intuitions. And um, moving into the sustainability challenges, um, we we noticed this this balance between put the burden. Uh, on the data providers, everything on the on the server side, or on the data consumers, everything on the on the client side. So we think that um, actually sustainable solutions, sustainable hosting solution, uh, avoiding problems like the broken links of several data sets, um, avoiding the need of of setting up uh, infrastructures for uh, putting the data out there. In that context, um, possibly large infrastructures like Clarin, uh, European Language Grid, European Language Data Space, et cetera, could play a role here. So it's something to explore. So uh, continuing with this idea of, of balancing the effort uh, between data provider, consumer, and host, Is there any solution like in the middle? I think we are we also to 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 follow or to pursue such um, solutions in the middle. And uh, actually, this is mm, this is not a new idea. Actually, we have like um, link data link data fragments solutions or a Sparkler or um, RDF it's RDF. It's DT. Um, the data fragments, as you know, it's it's um, like a proposal to redistribute the load between between client servers, following triple pattern uh, fragments. A Sparkler is a web service that allows running queries against uh, external data sets. And uh, RDF HDT, it's a um, community standard for uh, binary compression of RDF that uh, can be directly queried through, through Sparkle. 
So uh, what I'm going to do to, to illustrate with these examples is that there are ongoing efforts in that direction, and I think they go in the in the right direction as well. Another alternative is also to host um, and compress data, but specifying the the RDF uh, as a media type because typically um, client in the client side you have to to download the data sometimes following a, a binary um, compressed format uh, and you have to guess which is the format, et cetera. So that, that idea of uncompressed RDF dumps could help uh, make things easier. Okay, also about uh, sustainability. How can we lower this technical barrier uh, we mentioned before? Because these this, uh, barriers I mentioned before are can be like educational, but also technical. So we, what we miss here is something like um, like a WordPress for web for websites, but for a small link data providers. So something very simple to to use and and to set up, and uh, yeah, that could help. Uh, people with just a few data to, to, to expose their data in a quick and straightforward manner. Of course, this, this, um, we are not starting from scratch here, and there are uh, good steps in this direction. Uh, for illustration, I will mention here just, just a few. The data bus by the DBpedia community, uh, Wikibase, Semantic Wiki, Media Wiki, Wiki and, and for companies, this triple um, IDB. So these are, these are systems that go in that direction to, to simplify the, 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 the task of publishing of publishing data, following link data formats for, uh, well, small data providers, let's say. Okay, and then the next um, issue or the next challenge is um, possibly more, more specific to, to linguistic uh, link data in that case, which is the, the, the lack of coverage of some linguistic levels. We analyzed uh, in, a, in a survey uh, recently, well, that will be published very soon <laughs> in the web journal, um, a number of, of uh, well, how, how the dif different linguistic levels were covered by linguistic link data. And there are actually um, some, some, some levels that are very well covered, like lexica and semantics. Others are not so well covered, like phonetics and pragmatics. So uh, still a challenge is to provide uh, models and solutions, technical solutions for them. Because we cannot be sure that uh, these models do not exist because there's no proper use cases or the other way around. Um, nobody using it because they do not exist. <laughs> so this is another challenge. And the final challenge is the need to, 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 to work on more specific uh, cross-lingual and multilingual techniques in order to deal, uh, well, that, that, that is a critical aspect in linguistic link data. We need to, to, to deal with conceptual mismatches and cultural specificities. Of course, there's a good amount of work in, in this direction as well, but possibly new techniques and especially more benchmarks to test, um, for instance, cross-lingual linking will be, will be welcome. Okay, so that was about, um, about uh, challenges. And now we, in, in the Nexus Lingual community, we're proposing, well, like a roadmap, several steps, several uh, measures to take in order to, to address such uh, challenges. Some of them, I mean, it is, I, I present them in a sequential way, but they, they are not sequential, of course. Actually, they can coexist and they are, can work in parallel. But we wanted just to put uh, on paper um, our ideas about uh, what to do next and, and what we are doing now, actually. So first step, step is, uh, we already mentioned this, the idea is to, 
to, to, to allow more robust and, and sustainable solutions uh, open, if possible, infrastructures in place, especially to support medium and small scale uh, data providers who cannot afford their own uh, hosting infrastructure. The technology we think is already in place. So possibly what is missing here is um, new projects um, that include also uh, a clear focus on, on inf development on, of, of the infrastructural aspect. So being able to, 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 to ground the basis for small, medium providers to expose quickly their data on the LLOD cloud. Also, in parallel, more educational efforts are needed to, 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 to bridge this gap between well, the, the difficulties of, of lean data and linguistic lean data and the new user, new user. In that direction, I have to say, in the edu educational direction, I have to say that in Nexus Lingua we have been uh, working on a common curriculum for linguistic data science that has a, a, a strong uh, accent on, on linguistic link data. And as a result of this, we submitted the proposal for, for the Erasmus Mundus joint master degree. So we don't know, we will know the, the, the reply, the, the, uh, the result of the review in July. And if we get it, um, well, a consortium of four universities, but uh, <clears throat> open to, to many other uh, teachers in, in, in many other European countries, uh, we'll be able to, to drive this, this uh, new master degree on linguistic data science with a strong component of linguistic data. Also, I want to mention that we are finalizing the, a MOOC on linguistic data. So, coming soon, stay tuned. <laughs> and uh, as soon as this is ready, I think it will be an, a nice addition for people willing to, to enter into this topic uh, for the first time, or maybe with, with some experience also, that would be a nice, th a nice thing to have. Um, uh, second step is to, to work on development of new models, to work on new guidelines and best practices, to consolidate uh, what uh, is already there and uh, new systems for generation and linking. Also, I wanted to mention here that um, regarding new models, there's an ongoing um, effort in the W3C Ontolex community group um, on, develop, on, on stabilizing and, and developing new modules. This, is, this picture is, is the, the picture of Ontolex, its core, uh, its core module, and other modules that were developed when, when Ontolex were released, like Line for metadata, the COMP, bar trans for variation translation, SINSEM, and more recently, Lexico for lexicography. But the community is quite active still, and um, there are two new models for frequency attestation, um, uh, corporate annotation, and MORPH for morphology that are near to be closed and, and published. And recently, we have started uh, in the community group discussing a, a, a possible module on terminology in order to, to support terminology when, when ontolex, well, or to, to, to complement ontolex for publication of terminology. So just to illustrate that the, the W3C um, Ontario's community group is still alive and, and active on these topics, uh, hopefully it will continue doing so. Also, I mentioned guidelines and, and best practices. One of the last activities in the Warren was to, to compile ongoing work on guidelines and best practices. And actually, this is a work that uh, another community group, uh, W3C BPM lot, um, that uh, in, in cooperation with Lexus Lingua, we restarted its activities uh, just uh, a few months ago in order to produce a new round of, of best practices and guidelines. So if you have interest in, in any of these topics like uh, terminology, uh, cross-lingual linking, corporate annotation, uh, warnets, licensing, 
everything that is enlisted here. Uh, feel free to, to, to join the group and to, to contribute to it, because as I said, this is ongoing work. There's uh, ongoing, ongoing work. I, th I think there's uh, 12 guidelines uh, open at this moment and with a different level of maturity. Some of it is almost finished. Some of them uh, are in an early stage. But also to illustrate that uh, this is also something that is happening now. Um, another interesting step in this roadmap is the development of, of an observatory to measure the quality and evolution of linguistic data on the web. So it is also challenging, but it would be very nice uh, to, to analyze data sets along uh, different dimensions like uh, uh, availability, licensing, uh, the models they use, uh, how rich they are, etc. One sec. Okay. And also I mentioned to metadata. There are good mo metadata models out there, but um, they are they, ha they are used like in a limited way, only for discovery, document, um, relevant language resources. But I think this is a very interesting field where we could go even beyond and try to to really make possible the, the, the access to data, not, not only the access to the resource as a whole, and then you download it and then you you use it. But if we have um, we have repositories well documented, um, I think this is also well aligned with the idea of data spaces. It would be really nice to have uh, this data for direct reuse and, and interpretation. And also a massive population of the linked data cloud, because there's this uh, chicken and egg uh, problem. And um, the idea is to create a critical mass of data to be eventually exploited by final language applications to cut this, uh, this vicious cycle resulting in, in the lack of data caused because of the lack of exploitation of data and the other way around. Uh, the lack of exploitation opportunities because of the lack of the lack of data. So it would be great to have like a um, context, a project, an initiative that would allow us to to dramatically increase the the, pop, the population of the AWD cloud. And finally, not well, not finally, almost <laughs> the idea of of developing uh, this family uh, of services and uh, for accessing, uploading, integrating information. Something, uh, of course, there's a number of services already out there, but uh, we have in mind something like um, simpler, like, um, like a high in face for linguistic link data, or something like that, something along these lines, something that could be considered like uh, Easy to use, easy to enter into it, easy to deploy, uh, easy to well, to use to browse to the uh, to browse data to editing uh, data, new links, etc. And finally, um, as an extra bonus, <laughs> and, and also in, in line with with the recent talk that uh, Patricia Mar uh, Martin did uh, from UPN did on on, on the topic of uh, language models and linguistic link data. I think it is man mandatory the, um, to, to stimulate the research on hybrid symbolic and non-symbolic uh, systems. On the one hand, we have linked data. On the other hand, on the other hand we have uh, language models. And um, in, in the way in language model, sorry, linked data can benefit language models is through a better more explainable results, injecting uh, new knowledge on, on these language models, and also uh, the other way around. Um, language models, as we are actually doing now, can be used to enrich um, language graphs, uh, knowledge graphs in general, to um, lower the, the entry barrier, for instance, uh, um, for querying. You can post, well, 
queries in, in, in natural language and, and language models can help you in transform them into, into Sparkle, for instance. And um, well, there are many other many other aspects in which both initiatives can benefit from each other. But I will not, I won't extend much because of the because of the time. So I will directly jump into, into the conclusions. First, uh, in this uh, short presentation, we have seen that linguistic linked data has like a rich story quite in parallel to the broader link data field. Um, it has an increasing adoption, more and more, more people uh, working with uh, linguistic data is, is, is adopting this, this paradigm. But still, there are many challenges to address. We cannot say that uh, publishing link data is easy now. And in linguistic link data, even, even less because of the complexity of the underlying models and lemon, etc. Also, we have a new scenario now, which is um, caused by, by large language models. But uh, I don't see this like a threat, by, but uh, like an opportunity, I would say. And uh, this field still has a lot of potential, especially in synergy with lang large language models, for data-driven artificial intelligence and linguistic data science in general. I'm putting here for your reference some, some references, some, some papers of the, of the early days of linguistic link data and also more recent ones um, to give um, recent overviews on linguistic link data. Um, since this, these slides will be shared, I, I put them here for reference. And that's it. It's everything I wanted to, to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Jorge, for the presentation. And uh, I would like to open the floor for questions or comments from the audience. If there are none so far, but maybe a little bit later, uh, I, will, I would like to start with one question. Um, what challenges do you see in linking resources that have different models? So we know that yeah, you elaborated very much on, on the on the text model, on the text model, uh, and uh, and we know that it's frequently used for the description of the linguistic resources. Uh, but we also know that some other uh, data sets are described in SCOS, for example, or OWL uh, and some other semantic web models. So do you see any challenges between linking it the, uh, the data sets that have different models? Yes, there are challenges, of course. I think that in that um, in that aspect, we could take advantage of, of um, well, mature, of the mature field of ontology matching. And for to not lean ontology matching, there's no um, unique solution. So every problem needs to be analyzed and, and the different, uh, uh, different, different domains, different type of data, etc. need different matching solutions. Um, but I, I think that in the case of, of um, closer models, like uh, scores and, and ontolex, the difficulties are less because, for instance, um, ontolex has a lot of similarities with with uh, scores and uh, was used as inspiration also also in some of in, in some of their aspects, also because uh, ontolex wanted to to overcome some of the uh, scores and scores Excel uh, limitations. So. In that case, I think it's it's not so hard, not so difficult as as uh, in other cases, but it's still a challenge. Okay, thank you. And also another question about this: um, Can you tell us a few tools that are editors for Ontolex as well? So we know about Vogbench. We we use it. Um, it's uh, it's a very very well known. Um, 
useful for us. But uh, are there any other uh, softwares that uh, that have the editing function in Ontolex? Uh, there are some of them. Now the names do not come to my mind, but I think they they are at least when I use them in the past are in a less mature stage as as Pogbench is. So possibly they are they were like um, prototypes, and Pogbench I would say it's um, it's now also because of the support they have of, of several European projects. Um, it's it's quite mature. It's quite mature. Of course, Ontoles can be edited with uh, in principle with any general purpose semantic web tool like like protej for instance or 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 others um and i typically do actually <laughs> but um bog has the advantage of of having like um a specific views for for building a lexica on top of frontalex etc okay thank you i see that vasilis uh, raised his hand Yes, yes. It's not a question, but I would like to add something. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. It was a very interesting uh, presentation. I would like to, to add that on the slide that you had with uh, the technologies that uh, are trying to, to optimize the balance between the, the users and the, and the content providers, there is also a newer technology called the linked data event streams, which is something like a follow-up of the fragment that you mentioned. It's from the same team of the University of uh, Hent, and it works uh, towards uh, this direction, which, as you said, is very important to optimize the balance because it's, it's really difficult to build a linked data uh, platform for, for content providers. So it is a technology that tries to, to solve this problem, and it has been used also in, in EU um, institutions. So it's good also to, to have a look on this. And um, yes, no, okay. I don't know if you already know it. In, no, actually, I, I thank you for the pointer. If um, you could repeat it or maybe put in the chat and I can explore it. Uh, with yes, you. I will also put it in the chat. It's the linked data event streams. Or LDES. It is a way to balance better. Uh, actually, for content providers, it's easier to set up an infrastructure for uh, for their linked data, and uh, it is um, a continuation of the of the data fragments that you had already in your slide, and uh, it's from the same team. And it is a technology that has started to be applied quite. Uh, uh, quite a lot, so it's, uh, it would be nice to, to have a look also on this. Yeah, okay. thank you for the pointer. Um, it's also good to, to, to know that there are many other in initiatives going in that direction that, that I think is, is a, it's a good one. And uh, yeah, we'll take a closer look at it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the comment here. Yeah. Okay, are there any more questions from the uh, from the participants? No, I don't see any. Okay, then I think thank you very very much uh, Jorge for the for the presentation. It was really interesting. Please send us the slides. Uh, so that we can also upload on our website together with the recording, of course. And uh, and then we can share it with with everyone, yeah, who would like to watch it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, it was a pleasure. And then uh, good luck for the continuation of the projects and for the work. It's uh, it's a really promising field. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Thank you.